Greetings, today on my Focus RS I am installing the Shell Seat Super Low Seat Frames from JCR Developments. Alright, here we are then, the super low seat frames from JCR. As you can see, I have the full set, so for both of the front seats you can if you want. Just get an individual one if you just want to do the driver's seat, for example, but I figured might as well just do both. And uh, the reason why we're doing this, of course, is basically the seating position of the shell seats um, has been complained about quite a bit. And the reason why they are kind of high um, is simply because Ford wanted to avoid the cost of uh, re-homologation with like having a significantly different setup uh, with the shell seats. The full explanation you can find on the JCR website. Uh, but long story short, the seating position is quite high and JCR have come up with this lower kit um, to resolve the issue and it's all really lovely looking stuff really nicely made um, it feels really solid and of course um, well this part is the actual main part that JCR have designed and made and then the reels are brand new reels from Recaro as you can see and it has all these cutaways so it saves weight where it is possible it has a cool like JCR logo right there um, and yeah, there's different options as well. You get quite a bit of adjustability with this kit. So you can lower your seat by a maximum of 55 millimeters, um, or you can choose to go just 20 millimeters lower. Then you can also adjust the rake of the seat base. You can choose either the standard amount of rake, or you can choose seven and a half degrees of additional rake. There's even an extra kit that you can buy if you want some in between options. Per seat, you get um, a little bag of all of the required hardware. And yeah, it's finished in this nice satin black, so it has a nice OEM Plus look. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this has been a very, very popular modification. A lot of people say that it makes a huge difference with regards to the feel of how the car drives because having the seating position lowered down, it puts you closer to the road, uh, which gives a more connected feel to the drive. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so that's pretty much all I need to say. Let's get started with the installation. All right. Right, I'm gonna start here on the passenger side. One of the first things that I need to do is actually not anything to do with like removing bolts or anything. It's underneath here. We have our little like panel of electrical connections. Uh, you can kind of hopefully see that that is like on this metal like prong thing, which is then attached to part of the seat frame. Um, so essentially we need to get that off of there um, but what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna roll the seat forward and go around the back because we do have some electrical connections so it's pretty tough to see underneath here exactly what is going on um, it's quite a tight and dark sort of space um, but essentially what I'm going to do is disconnect any electrical connection and in particular I have um, the connections for the heated seats you can see one of the wires uh, coming down here if you haven't done the heated seat mod for the shell seats then you won't have that of course um, but yeah essentially just disconnect everything uh, and then we can remove that little panel around the front and then we should be ready to start removing the seat so in order to disconnect this from the metal prong here there's like a little square right in the middle a little square hole so if you just get something you know reasonably small but you know kind of blunt at the end and also brace it push that in and then give it a wiggle that should pop out at this point then, I'm ready to start unbolting stuff. So essentially there's four bolts. Um, there's the one, you probably saw the one around the other side at the back. There's this one here at the side at the back. And then there are the two that I have covered up with these nice paint mods covers at the front. Okay, for taking these bolts out, you will need a T50 Torx.
the way I'll try and do this is um, probably try and like sort of pivot it out um, either the rear door or the front door here um, just depending on what is convenient whenever I get in there and get my hands on it. There we are then, that was actually significantly easier to remove than I thought. Uh, just came straight out the side here, um, no problem at all. All. So now that we have the seat out entirely, we can much more easily get access to the nuts and bolts underneath. Also a good opportunity to clean up underneath the seat here. Um, these are really difficult to get to areas, so yeah, I'll do that in the meantime as well. Okay, so I have brought the seat indoors and I've got it laid on its back here and I've got lots of space to work with. Um, so that will be the most convenient way to do this. I've got all of this stuff for doing this side. I I have laid out all of the hardware that you get from JCR. I've worked out the sizes of bits that I'm gonna need in order to secure all of this stuff down. Um, so yeah, I can get started. Um, the first thing I can do, um, just for a quick and easy win, is for the seat belt buckle. Um, can remove this here. This requires the same T50 torques that we used earlier. Um, and what we just need to be sure of here is that this cable, we just wanna clip that off of the existing seat base so that this wire is totally free and then we can remove that and we can transplant it onto the new JCR which is gonna be right here. Okay, so we actually need to keep um, like screwing whilst also applying some downward pressure just to get this out uh, because we do have a piece of replacement hardware for this and um, it has this sort of like retaining washer in here um, so that's a little bit awkward you might need to go and grab some pliers to hold that because it you can see it's like moving hey um, so yeah we're gonna be using our nice fresh hardware um, and so in the pack um, there is just one of these, so you know it's the right one. It's a dome-capped Allen key bolt. Um, it's ever so slightly longer than the stock one. And that is because um, we are going to be using the largest nut in the pack uh, to secure that in place. All right then, on our JCR frame, um, it's pretty handy because there is a hole um, which lines up with this little notch. So we just line that up and get our bolt through and then we don't have to really worry too much. I mean there's a bit of adjustability as far as the angle of this um, but if you just sort of get it like smack bang in the middle then we should be good. I'll put a little drop of thread locker just on the threads here. Like I say this is the largest bolt in the pack and the largest nut in the pack so just get that started by hand. Okay, um, so then for tightening this down, you'll need a 15 mil uh, for the nut and also a six mil Allen key. So you just get that nice and tight and we're good. All right, next I am going to open up the new seat rails. Okay, what we need to do is we need to release the lower part of the reel from the top part of the reel for, well, for both of the reels. Um, so what I've got here is, this is from the Recaro pack. It's not the smaller one that we're actually going to end up with. Um, so I'm just attaching that initially. The way that it works is you just insert that little tab thing in there and then line it up and it sort of pops in. So this is just gonna give leverage um, because we need to like lift this up in order to release the lower part of the reels. So I've just got my foot on the end of the reel here and then I'm gonna lift up on the lever. So pulling up and then this should slide out. There we go. Also need to do it um, in the other direction as well. So I'll just show you that with this one so there we go same sort of thing essentially what we're doing at this point is 
exposing the mounting holes, which we can then line up with the holes on the JCR frame. All right, so if we're looking at the rear of the JCR frame, um, this particular reel right here, you can see the orientation. It's got this stuff pointed inward and you can see the angle of that. And this is the one that I've got the top reel moved forward. So you can see that there are a couple of holes right here. Um, so basically the further most back one, what we want to do is we want to put one of our longer H6 bolts through there, like so. Then grab one of our big circular spacers and put that on the end like that. And then go through the rearmost hole here like so, then grab a corresponding nut and then just lift it up and get that on there just by hand for now. Okay, and we can move on. Right, so now I'm gonna slide this top part back. So, you know, if you need to use the lever, then do that. Um, but what you can do is if you can just push down there, it should slide like so. And when we do that, that exposes just one single hole on this side, which corresponds to this hole right here, as you can hopefully maybe kind of see. Uh, so then it'll just be the exact same thing once again. Um, one of our longer uh, six mil hex bolts through here with a spacer underneath, like so, and a corresponding nut. So at this point you can pop the nuts off either side and put a little bit of thread locker on there and then get the nut back on. Now what I have is a 13mm socket on the nut and then just a 6mm allen key on the bolt. So I'll hold with the allen key and turn with my socket until it feels nice and tight. All right, and then I repeat that with the other one. All right, there we go. That is the reel attached on one side. So now I will just repeat that exact same process on the other side. There we go, both reels are on and secured nicely. So next thing we can do is, if we get the reels to be at the same level, as you can see, this one is currently more forward than that one, um, then we can put on our JCR supplied um, sort of thinner, more narrow lever. So if you look at the lever, it's not just flat, it has a bit of an upward angle. Or if you have it the wrong way around, it'll be a downward angle. We want it to be an upward angle. If you line up those two holes like flat, then you should have a little bit of an upward angle. What we will do is get it in one side. And then the other. There we go. So at this point we should be able to lift the lever and actuate this like we would if we were in the car. Like that. So yeah, now we can move on. Now we are ready to get the first of our two brackets on. So this is the rear bracket. It is the thicker of the two. And this is what is mainly going to be determining the amount of seat lowering. So JCR say that there are essentially two options, 20 mil and 55 mil. And the way that you select that um, by using the same part is simply by whether you decide to bolt this on like this or like this. So basically with these two end brackets either pointing down or pointing up. So pointing up will of course be the minimal amount of lowering. Whereas if you flip it around like this and have the brackets pointing downwards, the amount of lowering you will get is 55 mils. Um, so that's what I'm going to go for today. So what I've done is I have rolled the reels all the way back and that'll just give us a bit easier access to the holes that we want to access. And you may notice that we have one larger hole and one smaller hole. Very simply, we line up the bracket holes with the holes on the reels 
as you can see they line up real nice so now we can just drop the hardware in so over here in our remaining hardware the shorter of the bolts that remain we have a thicker and a thinner one and as you'll see that corresponds to a larger and smaller hole so we just grab one of each and very simply drop them in through like so now I can lift this up, get some thread locker on, and get the corresponding nuts in place. Okay, so that is of course just loosely on there. I just did it with my fingers um, while we go and do the other side, uh, which is going to be a little bit more awkward because this lower part of the JCR frame sort of gets slightly in the way. So just with a little bit of difficulty, we're just going to have to get those nuts on there and get them as tight as we can. Okay, so I've dropped the smaller of the bolts in there. I put my thread locker on uh, before I dropped in this time. Uh, so so now I have a 10 mil box end spanner, which I am just gonna pop the nut onto so that I can then feed it in here. Nice, so um, even now before I put the bigger one in, I'm just giving it a little push around just to make sure it's nicely lined up and then I'm gonna do my final tighten down of this uh, for which requires a five mil Allen key. So I'm just gonna hold it from below and turn the Allen key. So exact same thing for the larger of the bolts, except this time it requires a 13 mil to hold. Nice. So now I'll just tighten up the other side and then that will be this done. All right, there we go. So that is nice and secure. So now we can move on to the front. So much in the same way that we um, moved the reels all the way back for that, uh, I'm gonna move the reels all the way front so that we can get access to the front holes. So much in the way that the rear bracket, like we mentioned before, is going to be uh, controlling the amount of lowering depending on which way you have it flipped around. The front bracket is going to be doing something similar, but with regards to the rake. So the rake, of course, being the angle of the base of the seat. So with it in this position, that means that it is going to be flat um, in terms of changing the rake. So in other words, standard seat rake. Um, but if we flip it around and have this in the upper position, that is going to raise the front up and therefore raise the rake up. I think it's seven and a half degrees that JCR say. Um, so I'm actually quite interested um, in trying out this additional rake, so I am going to do it in this position here. Um, but of course, it's going to be a personal choice and it may be that I come back and change this um, at some point, uh, which of course is going to be a bit of work to do. But I mean, I'm quite interested um, just to get the maximum out of this kit. So I am going to go for the full seven and a half degree increase in rake. You can see once again that the holes are lining up, one bigger, one smaller, exactly the same as the rear bracket. So two of each size, uh, exactly the same process, um, using our wrenches to go in under the reel um, to hold the nut while we tighten with the Allen key from above. beautiful and with that I believe we are now ready to swap the standard frame with our nice new fully set up JCR frame. Alright then the four connecting points you can see are here 
here and then the equivalent on the other side. So these will require a four mil Allen key uh, for the little hex head bolt. And then around the other side, that is a 10 mil nut. Okay, so as you can see, we now have the old stock frame and reels off, and we are ready to go. Um, one thing that um, I haven't really talked about is the washers that were in the pack here. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one uh, because it's not abundantly clear where those washers are intended to go by JCR. Um, I mean, it did say that this would come with like some kind of documentation, uh, but my kit didn't for whatever reason. So, um, you know, I don't quite know. But, um, you know, whilst I was doing this, you know, there's two sizes of washers, a big size and a smaller size. Uh, so, I mean, if you just go through each of the bolts, these bolts right here, um, this space is too small for the big washer, um, but the small washer is too small for these bolts. You could make an argument for these, they would fit um, on here, um, but, you know, ultimately, you know, is it really necessary um, given the fact that the holes are like basically the right size and probably the same kind of tolerance as the washers and then you're just bolting straight onto this flat steel um, which is essentially acting like a massive washer anyway. So I mean, you know, what would really be the point in putting them there? Then after that, there's only the four connections going on here uh, for the seat to the new JCR frame and we're actually going to be using the stock hardware for this um, which doesn't really require any additional washing so you know I don't really see the point of them going there um, and then the only thing that remains then is the four um, here and again we have to use the stock bolts which none of the washers actually fit into so it's kind of a bit of a mystery as to what exactly those washers are really for um, so what I have actually ended up doing with the larger of the washers it just so happens that they are perfectly sized for the four seat base bolts. The standard washers that come on this I always find were kind of crappy um, so you know this was a nice opportunity whilst I had this off already and had perfect easy access and had these random additional washers that just happened to be the perfect size I went ahead and took the opportunity to upgrade on the base and um, so yeah they look real nice and they fit perfect as I say. We're now ready to bolt the seat onto the JCR. Okay so I reckon that putting the seat on its side like like this will make this process a bit easier. Bring the JCR over here and kind of get it in the approximate location. Of course I have this additional electronic connections from the heated seat mod um, which if you do have as well I would say feed that through the middle here. Obviously, if you don't have that done, then you won't have that at all. Essentially, what I'm doing is the brackets, the JCR brackets go on the inside of the seat. All right, so I've got it kind of, you know, sort of dangling in place, I guess you could say. This is a little bit fiddly just because of the lack of, like, space. So I'm kind of just dropping the nut in there and then sort of pushing it over into place and then um, I'll push the nut down so that it like engages with the nut and then just using the open end of my spanner here is how I'm going to hold it um, and the reason why I'm having to do it like this is because if I use the box end then once um, the bolt is anyway sort of through there. Um, I wouldn't be able to get the uh, spanner out again, uh, which is obviously a bit of a problem. Um, but this way, not getting it super tight just yet, just sort of like roughly hand tight, 
I can remove my tools. Something that's kind of interesting here is that there's some degree of gap in between the uh, sort of frame of the seat base and the JCR bracket here. Um, I don't know how easy that is to see, um, but it's like that on both sides. So as it turns out, I think we may need to utilize these washers here just to space that out a bit, just to get a nice, secure, tight connection. But yeah, that's interesting, because uh, it doesn't really seem to be on the rear um but yeah so essentially what i'm going to do for the front ones then in the jcr pack there are a couple of random additional long bolts which just happen to be right size uh, for the stock nuts here so what i will do is i will go bolt then washer essentially to wash the bolt then i'll go through but in between the jcr bracket and the stock frame i'll put another washer in there to space it out hopefully you can see the setup that i'm talking about the way we've sort of sandwiched the washer in there i'm going to do that on the other side as well and then we're poking through there so we can get our nut in place Okay, there we go. Again, not doing it like super duper tight until we have all four corners in place. Okay, I have flipped the seat around. So now I'll just repeat the process on this side. All right, nice. All nice and secure, looking good. Um, so we're pretty much ready to go back out to the car with this. Um, just a couple of little points to note um, with regards to like our seat belt wire here. So previously, if you remember, we unclipped this little clip <laughs> from, um, this was the location um, on the seat base. Um, and I mean, we could, put that back on there but I am not I think because whereas the before the buckle was bolted onto a little bracket that was part of the moving reel now it is static it is part of the lower frame um, so essentially what that means is you whenever you're moving the seat forward and back this will no longer go with you um, so if you have that you know like in there and then you move the seat it could like you know, tug on this, which, you know, might not be so great. So what I think I will do is, we will just snip this off, it's almost like a tiny little cable tie, um, and then just root it underneath the seat. But yeah, apart from that, we are pretty much ready to go. So I was just about to take it down to the car and I noticed a slight little fitment issue. So if we look around here, just where the original like seat base um, is, meeting the JCR frame, it's literally sort of gonna be grinding on it, which isn't a great thing. Oddly enough, over on this other side, there's, you know, a gap, there's plenty of space, you know, there's no issue there. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's probably not helping the fact that, you know, because I'm running the additional rake, if I wasn't doing that, it would probably, you know, it would like go a bit straighter and it wouldn't be doing that, but it's a bit of a problem. It's gonna just absolutely wreck the, the frame if I try and like roll it forward and back. So I'm gonna need to unfortunately take it apart and maybe use a couple of the washers uh, just to raise that up ever so slightly just to give that a little bit more clearance. So there we are then, I took it apart, I put the washers in as spacers and hopefully you can see now we have a little bit of a gap so we have enough clearance so we're all good. Um, so yeah, it's a weird one with those washers it seems that you know they're on, they're in the pack if you need to use them depending on what way you're putting together the kit if you were just going for the 20 mil lowering you wouldn't really have this issue at all um so yeah you wouldn't really need them but yeah um it's interesting but you know we're all good now so finally we are ready to go out to the car all right so seat going back into the car literally just going to try and do the reverse that i did removing it so getting it at an angle going from the top in and around the corner and then down all right at this point then it's obviously not aligned right um, just yet um but i need to like you know put this sort of 
in the middle or sort of behind all of this stuff obviously before we had that sort of prong that probably sat up about here which we do not have anymore uh, so we just need to get that back the ways and out of the way and then I'll jump in the back seat probably get all those plugs connected up obviously um, as I've mentioned a few times if you don't have the heated seat mod you'll just have the one plug uh, which is the pink one for the seat belt we have a bunch of these like little Christmas tree type clips that sort of clip into the bottom of the seat base um, so I'll just do that so initially I've just got everything like out of the way and I'm approximately aligned um, I haven't got those little clips you know clipped up or anything or properly tidied but I will get to that after I bolt in the seat so you can see that it is lining up um, pretty good with the holes in the car so yeah factory bolts are all the same um, you'll remember it was this big t50 Torx so I'm just gonna get some thread locker on here get all four in sort of just hand tight initially and then we will tighten them all up nice and secure There we go, we are in and I went on ahead and tightened them up fully so they are super duper tight. Just need to connect up those electrical connections underneath and then that will be this side done. So we've just got the cables in, you know, reasonably tidy. Um, it's pretty difficult to get in there to do it as you might expect with the much reduced space to get your hands in there to work with it. But yeah, I mean, it, it just doesn't really matter a whole lot obviously as long as, you know, you just don't have any cables that are catching on anything uh, which I believe I do not so yeah I think this side is all good so the difference in height is like immediately noticeable yeah get a better view from back here you can see it's quite the difference uh, you can well you, you can see like the light coming over the top of the one that we've done okay jumping in for the first time to try this out Whoa. yeah it feels actually really nice. It's really comfortable. It's a strange thing, you know, like obviously I am down lower, like for sure, like I can see that. Um, but probably the biggest thing actually is the plus seven and a half degrees of rake. Uh, what that does is it kind of like makes you sort of sink down into the seat more, uh, which makes it feel sort of more like buckety if that makes sense uh, if you think of you know like you know a full-on racing car that has one of those full-on racing bucket seats it kind of makes this feel a lot more like that you're kind of more in the seat it's sort of feels just like it's more supportive than it was even before which is really really cool and it's going to make for a really big change on the driver's side uh, so I can't wait to get that done but yeah this feels great and I really do like that rake I'm going to keep that rake in there um, so yeah all I have to do now is repeat the exact same process on the driver's side. Um, I'll do it off camera because I don't need to show you that process twice and I will come back to you once that is done. Well, there we are then. I have just finished the driver's side, the seat lowering kit from JCR, and I am loving it. It is really, really cool. It's such a big difference. Uh, I have to admit, before I decided to go ahead with this, I was a little bit skeptical about it, but really it does the job exactly as advertised and it is a really noticeable difference i do feel like i'm a mile away from the steering wheel but obviously i need to readjust that bring it down a bit it's in the position that it was in before i did the lowering and um, so yeah that's all part of the fun and it's gonna take probably a bit of time to get used to um but it just 
honestly it just feels really really awesome and I can't wait to get out on the road and to play with it. So that is it for the install of the JCR lowering kit for the Focus RS shell seats. A great job, I'm very happy with it. I hope you like it too and I hope you like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe for more content to come very very soon. Thank you once again. Goodbye.